Hello and happy Thursday. Welcome to Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine products and the Octi Hoops, which we'll be using today. Hello, squirrel. <laughs> I like that. And Tina, what was what were you guys talking about before I went live? Hi, Louise. Hi, Sheila, and I'm hoping this is working. Yes, because <laughs> I just turned on my phone, which is my ears to know that I'm live or that everything's working. This is season three, episode 15 of Fabrically Speaking Live. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Madeline. It's going to be interesting. You're going, you're at a baseball game. <laughs> Hello, everybody in the stands with you. How funny is that? Today I'm drinking my own juiced apple, carrot, and ginger juice. Been on a health kick lately. Raise your hand if you've tried to embroider on a towel before and had a challenge doing it or felt found it difficult. Stabilizers is the answer to making your embroidery look good the day you make it and so that it is sustainable in that appearance or that after washing and drying your embroidery continues to look the same as you did the day that you embroidered it. One of the things you wanna make sure you do is you wanna make sure you pre-wash and dry your towels so that they shrink down to a, a nice shrunk size. <laughs> if they're gonna shrink so that they have shrunk. You can do that by putting the towels inside of a lingerie bag or a pillowcase and Go ahead and wash it. You don't, I don't even think you need to use detergent. You just need to, well, maybe wash and dry inside of a bag. That way they don't get all tossed around and get to where they don't look fresh and new anymore. You can roll the towel up as well. It won't dry as fast that way, but flat fold inside of a pillowcase is another thing. Just so that whatever on the outside is the thing that gets beat up. Then you know the towel isn't gonna to shrink. Now, as long as you use products that don't shrink for, for instance, the stabilizer for the back, the stabilizer for the top, and the thread in the bobbin and the thread in the needle, you wanna make sure you use all of the types of products that don't shrink, that are not going to change the look of your towel after you've washed and dried it. Yes, the first time you do anything is a learning experience, isn't it, Sonia? Oh, you're at home listening to the game. Well, that's not as bad. I thought you were in the stands. <laughs> when you, you may have an embroidery machine and you can use the same products that I'm gonna be showing here if you do. But we're gonna, I'm gonna be doing this because there aren't two of me. Using the Octi Hoops, and the Octi Hoops are a set of three frames that are designed to make it so that you can do anything you can do with an embroidery machine with a regular sewing machine. So if you have an, an antique straight stitch only machine, you can do this as well. This is April 7th of 2022. If you're watching this on another day, you're having a double voice? I'm not, and I'm hearing it through my phone as if I'm a person watching. I don't know why you would have a double. I'm not having, I'm not having any audio issues. Is my voice in sync with my body? <laughs> we had issues the last week and you guys didn't tell me 
Uh, not that I would have been able to figure it out then, but I have since figured it out and it should be working nicely today. Hoping. Looks like when I'm looking on my cell phone that that my body's moving right. <laughs> so this is a towel that I embroidered for the VIP group on their VIP, whatever you want, Claire to so Saturday. This is a pattern that they were given as being part of the VIP group. And that video is in there. I'm going to be using similar techniques that I did for this on that. And this is another pattern that they're getting. But anything that you print out online, you can print on our stabilizers. This is our cover up stabilizer and it is the, what is it? The Panda Bear. And by the way, I tried really hard, you guys, to, to make it so that I could, sorry, I was doing something I had to think. <laughs> I tried to make it so I could uh, use my cell phone when I'm live on Thursday and it was, I was doing that for the VIP group because we use Zoom and it is what was causing us to have trouble on the live. So this is our Creative Feet site and inside the Creative Feet site, there's products and stabilizers and inside the stabilizers link, you'll find animal characters related to the creative feet line of sewing machine stabilizers. This is the cover up and this is what I'm using. This is what I have printed out. It comes in 16 colors and also available in variety packs. There they are. So these variety packs are broken down into two primary and blending colors. And if you look at Linus's face, you see how his face has normal skin color and then Lucy looks all red. That's exactly the same stitch count because that was done with an embroidery machine, not done by a normal free motion method. So same stitch count, same thread. And that's the difference between using an embroidery topper than not. And then if you go back, you'll see the stick and tear, which is the green frog stabilizer. And this is the same stabilizer we used to make masks during the height of COVID, but it's primary uses for machine embroidery. And you can use this in an embroidery machine and outside of an embroidery machine using the Octi hoops. This is what I'll be putting on the back of the hoop and the best size to buy if you have the octa hoops are the 12 inch size or larger. We were out of it for a while, which is never fun, especially for the manufacturers of garments that use our products. So on the some of you may have some of our stick and rent stabilizer and it is the dolphin stabilizer and it is clear and allows us to print a clear sticker using it. We're currently sold out of this product. So if you already have it, you're good to go. If not, you can use our cover up and print on it and embroider over it. And this is the white cover up that I taped onto a piece of inkjet printer paper. Before I did, I, I wrote upside down in an arrow and I put the paper in the tray of the printer upside down with it going in this direction. And then I printed and it printed out on the paper like you see here. Then I taped the leading and I, I actually printed or didn't cut this piece big enough. So I taped on the side, just need like two, at least two areas where it holds it down and it just printed right over it. So now I have a color sticker to print or color stabilizer to print over. And I am going to make it into a sticker, which is one of the really neat features of the stick and rinse is that it is a sticker. 
I was going to have this done as usual every week. I'm not quite as done as I wanted to be, but I had so much fun doing the design. Didn't turn the phones off soon enough, so I got onto a couple phone calls with customers. So I'm going to I'm going to step out for long enough to spray some spray adhesive on the back side of this and it's going to hold it down while I embroider over the towel with it. And one of the things that I did in the VIP for those of you who are in my VIP group is I didn't use the hold light on the top of the towel. I only use it on the bottom. Today I'm going to use it on the top and the bottom of the towel. And that that means that the sticky of this will be on the hold light and not on the towel. And the hold light is the Hummingbird Stabilizer. So on our stabilizers page, see the Peach Hummingbird and that comes as a flat fold, 27 inches wide, which is considerably wide. And that is what we use to prevent the terry cloth loops from becoming stuck to the actual fabric. You can also use it, as you see here, it holds the fabric and tightly and locks the bias in the fabric, basically, so that it can't stretch. So it's great for t-shirts and sweatshirts. If you wanted to embroider this design on a sweatshirt, you would apply the same techniques that I'm going to show now. And the cutting of the, using it for pattern drafting is amazing, especially on fabrics that fray tremendously. This is another design that you can actually use for inking as well. For those of you who are getting into the fabric painting or fabric inking that I've been teaching that I taught last week, if you missed, if you missed last week's Fabricly Speaking Live, I, I did do a little inking on some fabric for a, a, a I shouldn't talk about last week's because I'm stuttering through it. Something to a cozy or a koozie for your ice drinks. So I'll give you this stuff to look at while I quickly go spray. And a little music. So this is a, a little commercial. A little commercial break. Be right back, guys. Thanks for your patience. You also use the same application for baseball caps. This is the spray adhesive that I'm going to use, and I'm going to do it in the garage because it's unhealthy. I need to let it dry. And as it dries, the chemical inside of the can 
when it combines with the O2 in the air, it changes this adhesive from a liquid, sticky, easily transferable adhesive to a repositionable sticker feeling like a post-it note. So you don't have to worry about it getting off of this and hopping onto your towel. The main reason that I'm going to use the hold light as a barrier between it and the towel is because when we go to pull it off, the, I had trouble keeping the, the loops from the terry cloth from not getting cut off when I, or getting pulled out when I separated the pattern from the towel on the Saturday's class. Yes, the baseball cap is a video on my YouTube channel. I'm probably going to do more of that. I got myself a white hat and it's just going to be a fun summer. I look forward to doing some summery things, satisfying all the desires that I have for things that I'd like myself and see if you guys want the same things that I do. You want to, you do not need to use when you print on our, on our cover up, you do not need to use high quality printing setting. You don't want to go all the way down to draft, but just like a standard setting is good because otherwise it releases more ink than is needed. When your printer releases ink, it, it's planning or they design it because the ink goes into the porous nature of paper and our cover up is vinyl so it doesn't have any pores in it. It won't take and draw in the ink. It kind of sets it on the surface of the of it instead. Now when I did the towels that you see here, because it's one color on a color of towel, I gotta make sure I turn off my be right back and my music here. Here we go. On this towel I used the blue cover and I was able to even see through this to trace it which is really something else. So all of the colors I'm able to actually see through enough to trace if you print out a design or print out a letter using the fonts in your computer you can create monograms. That's how I did this one as well. On that one I used the blending colors option and I use our pink. And it's really any shade of pink will block any shade of pink thread. So you don't need 15 shades of pink thread. You just need one yellow for all the yellow shades, one orange for all the orange and rust and, and likewise along the color line. The most popular color we have is clear. It is unique to any other vinyl that you would purchase in stores. It doesn't stick so that when your sewing machine needle goes in and out, it doesn't increase your chances of having your thread shred. That's true of all of our vinyls. They're slippery, not sticky. So we have manufacturers that buy 18 by 18 inches by 60 feet rolls of black and they use black and they make a lot of a lot of garments with black thread on white fabric or black thread on red fabric anytime you have a real dramatic contrast from white to dark green and you want to make sure that the green thread totally covers up whatever fabric you're using as this is not just for those types of fabrics. You can use this on anything from just your regular cotton for all of your embroidery. I have people that say they never embroider without it. The only time you don't want to use it on top of is when you're going to do, think of a, a tennis racket and you got the outside of the tennis racket and the handle. Now that you'd use the topper on and the sashing or the strings in between, there you wouldn't want to put the cover up because you'd just be pulling out a bunch of cover up and uh, it's not utilizing enough of it for the trouble that you're going to go through pulling all that all those stitches out okay i didn't pick out my colors of threads yet but they're handy so it shouldn't take me too long i was going to print 
one with the clear cover to see how it how it turned out but I did not have time to do that first so I'll post pictures inside of the school and the school is free it's create.clairowley.com it is at the top of the chat a link for you to click on should you want to join and the school is where the VIP group is So when you go to Create with Claire Rowley, which is located on the platform, The Mighty Networks, and inside The Mighty Networks are a lot, a lot of different educators. So today's, let's see. <laughs> it's so much slower when I'm live. So you got your most recent you have your your options of decorating or decorating of organizing the different things that are showing up on your page when you go into it by the way so it's just learning you can also type inside of here and search for things we can go to topics and inside of topics we have the fabrically speaking live topic i believe I created that to help you guys yeah, find everything related to Fabrically Speaking Live, which is the show you're watching right now. And there you'll find today's session. And in here, I am, that is where I will post the picture of how inside the comments right here. That's where I'll send or I'll post different pictures from today's episode after I'm all finished showing you oh, that's right that's <laughs> I have one screen and it shows me something and then I switch and then I'm like it didn't seem like it worked that has had enough time to set and I was just trying to find my hold light in here which is usually really handy I think I moved it. Nope. Too many projects. <laughs> well, look at that while I try to find it. it shouldn't be far. Oh my goodness. I'm going to iron this on as well. going to iron it on both the top and the bottom of the towel. Think about where you're putting it, Claire. On this, when I embroidered without putting the hold light on top, I had to, I had some of the a couple of the loops pull up and I had to use a, a hook and pull it back to the other side. This is when I ask my angels, help me find where I put the whole light. I'm going to pick a color of thread that is less likely to show up on all of these different colors that I'm going to use. I think a tan would go good. If it were to pop up at all. But you can also just not worry so much about it popping up and 
use the lingerie thread in the bobbin. And the lingerie thread comes in white and black. Lingerie thread has this tremendous stretch to it. So it's when it goes through the tension of your bobbin, it actually pulls a little bit. And as it pulls through your tension, it pulls the needle thread down and it prevents or reduces the chances of your bobbin thread showing on the top of your embroidery. I got ink on me today. Dirty fingers. <laughs> So as I've been talking, I've been hoping that my cover, my hold light would pop up. But it hasn't. You can see this is the pattern printed out on the fabric cover. Sticky, but not too sticky. I'm going to go steal a little. I will be right back. It looks a lot like cellophane, but it has no stretch and it's ironable. I'll get these out of the way. This one's still not dry and it's the one I printed on high quality. I think where it's still wet is on the tape. Move this out of the way. And when you use this, you want to use set your your iron so that it's not set for steam. Whoops, <laughs> I must have ironed it last. Nice thing about ironing this on to the towel beforehand is you can also draw marking lines. So if you want to make sure your patterns place straight on top of your towel, then you can line it up. Here's an example. You would have your cutting mat beneath you instead of this, but this will work in a pinch. And you can draw on the shiny side using any kind of pen, including a Sharpie. And you can do a straight line like that and then draw another line that way so you know that that is your straight up and down. I got ink on my fingers. Oh, I knew you were going to ask that. I wish I could remember the name of this thing. I'm trying to remember what it's called. So we want to fold our towel in half. 
I usually go about four inches above the last ornamental feature of the towel itself for positioning. It has, it's not really a hook. Sheila, it's probably something, oh man, I really got to figure that out. It's, it's a, it's like a little stick with a rough outer surface on it. And you pull in, you, you take it and you go through sweaters and things and it takes strands and and it like grabs hold of it and it's skinny and you're able to just to push it through i'm gonna have to look for a source for it but you can also use a really really small crochet hook or painstakingly use a straight pin or a paper clip or a toothpick and just kind of push from the top and push it through. Once you get any part of it coming through to the back side, then you're able to grab it and pull it through more. I'm going to do the same thing on the back now. And basically this side doesn't matter if it's marked because it's the back. You can see it looks all shiny and it's loose right now. And then you can iron with this. In other words, you can move the iron because it doesn't stretch. So you can't stretch the fabric beneath it. Now we have our marking location to position our design. wonder if on this towel if I should do this, bring it down here. It's just a little sticky, but once it's stuck on there, it's going to be stuck. If you're in the VIP group, this pattern is already in there. Now that is held in place. Next, I'm going to get the hoop ready. Which hoop should I use? And generally, I always go for the smallest of the frames. You don't need to have a lot of extra room unless you think, maybe I'll add a little flare to it. If you're going to just stick with the pattern and the pattern in its entirety fits within that window. There's no point in going bigger. You'll always have more control, especially when you're learning with a smaller frame rather than the largest of the frames. A snag pole. I think that is its name. And the secret to that is don't pull it from the bottom up. Don't go through the backside and pull up and then pull down. You just take it through and it just pulls whatever is sticking up from the top down and as it exits it's forced to go it's kind of like a little caterpillar <laughs> but super super tiny yeah Amy if you want my help with that let me know we'd love to have you in the VIP group we're going to go with the fourth Saturday of the month for whatever you want Whatever you want Claire to sew Saturday is the fourth Saturday because we don't want to mess with Easter. So you guys have weeks to figure out what you're going to want me to do on that day. And in between then and now, two patterns will be releasing. So let's pick. Right now I, I have a skirt that I wanted to wear. I have like a champagne -y lavender color. I'm going to use that in the bobbin. That'll go with all but the yellow and the light green. And I'm going to start 
as I do when I paint paintings with the the item that is furthest from me, if, if it were really there. And since the flowers are in front of the cross, I'm going to start with the cross. And I'm not going to just use one brown, but you could. You could just use one color brown. I, I should probably just use one color brown because I'm trying to keep the videos short on Thursday. Brown. We're going to use the Octi Hoops and we don't need a foot at all when using them. And you definitely don't need a foot at all when embroidering this way because I already tested it out with the bunny. And I'm going to remove the snap-on adapter that came with my machine. This is April 7th of 2022. I'm doing that to help people who come in later and think we're live. And then they're like, why isn't anybody answering me? Because <laughs> it's a week later. So no presser foot at all. This light's stronger than it needs to be. That's too light or too dark. <laughs> it's kind of a nice thing to have in the screen as I grab a brown. your turn to suggest. Which, which brown do you guys want me to use? And one of you said, you never let us actually give you the answer. So dark, medium, or light, lighter brown. This is the pattern, so I'm think I'm leaning toward this one. Okay, light, medium, or dark? Middle. Got one middle. So this one. It's a pretty color. Reminds me of chestnut. And I don't have this, the uh, name of it, but it's the Polyfa Polyfast number 9091. And you will find the names inside of our website. They don't write them on the spool, just the numbers. I also highly recommend that whenever you, when you buy a spool of thread like this, that you go like that and go, that's its item number, and you write it inside of the spool. PF9091. And you could actually write out its name in there. And now that's going to stay even if your sticker pops off. What's no? Did I choose the wrong color? Was I wrong about which one to use? Okay, this one then. Or was it the dark one? I said light, medium, or dark. You guys said middle, and this is the medium one. It's the one I had chosen. I won't move them now. Do a number one, two, or three. One two, or three. Oh, it's you that said it, huh, Tina? You guys got to type faster. Here's the thing. I've already waited 20 seconds. And that's why I don't usually wait for your answer, because I feel like I'm waiting too long. Hi, Mary. So two 
If I get two twos, I'm going to grab the two and start. All right, there we go. All right, you guys see you got what you wanted. Can't say I'm not doing it now. <laughs> Now to get the hoop ready for embroidery. Pull this out. I don't need to iron again. So you can buy the stick and tear in a 12 inch size and know that all sizes are going to fit it. Or you can buy it in smaller sizes as well. Oh, I thought there was a small one in there. I get all the end cuts. <laughs> it's also available in smaller ones, all the way down to this size. And this would be the seven and a half inch roll. And then the next one up would be your 10 inch and then your 12 inch. But you don't waste any, really, at all with this. Because what we do is we lay it down and trace around it and then cut. And these little pieces become patches. Should you embroider something like a heart and you pull the garment off, you'll have a heart shaped hole and then you can patch it with this section here that you've, the extra. Oh, you guys are funny. You guys like to get your way, huh? Mm. You're kind of getting your way today because I'm showing a lot more than I was supposed to. But I told you I'd be a little bit off for a while while I figure out the new layout of the show. Wendy's got toys on the way. You guys should share pictures when you order that much at once. Somebody else got a lot of stuff this week. Brenda's ordered the uh, the presser I kept using that I said we can't sell them because I accidentally cooked it too long. There are currently no pressers on order that have not been already made and shipped. It's a good time to order when I don't have a back order list. I have an ink sitting here <laughs> from last week. Yes, lots and lots of toys. I should really wash my hands. Try to get some of that ink off. What have you got on your sewing table this week, you guys? <laughs> I'm so embarrassed by my hands being all dirty. Still getting used to shorter fingernails. All right, sorry for being boring there for a minute. Now on one side of the octahoops is an uneven surface for sticking our sticker onto. I have more than one set of octahoops. So I have one set that I use for embroidery and another set I use for quilting. So that I don't have to wash my hoops should the adhesive transfer a little bit onto the frame and they get a little sticky. Generally that happens from leaving the stabilizer on the hoop for a long period of time. And you can use the product called Goo Gone and just put that on and wipe it off and then wash it with dish soap. When you're done, 
Sounds like a drum. All right. Now I can place the towel and you're going to be placing not the towel, but the hold light onto the hoop. The most important thing is knowing that your that the entire thing is in the hoop. There we go. So everything is really held in there well. Now I have the issue of rolling, getting the towel out of the way. Can't do this. I don't remember having this much ink transfer last time. So I think I might, there might be one side that's better to print on than the other on the vinyl. Because I am dirtier than I was a minute ago. There's nothing better than our stick and rinse, you guys, and I'm so sorry I don't have it right now. I'm just going to quickly go wash my hands. I'll be right back. Another option is to use the hold light. The one that is covered here, that one I printed on to do this butterfly and I didn't have it getting on my fingers at all. At least I don't remember it happening. It may have. How sweet is that? A teddy bear out of your grandmother's mink coat. So I'm going to roll up this towel. On both sides. To prevent this from getting worse. As I embroider. I can iron a bit of this on top. Make a sandwich so it won't get on me anymore. And doing that would really have eliminated me needing to use the spray adhesive at all. Wow, you really, yeah, there's something different. That definitely did not happen last time, last Saturday. It wasn't last Saturday, was it? Butterfly is in the VIP group. It's one of the patterns. These are designs I actually draw. They're my own, my own artwork. Oh, 
Oh, quit beeping. It's the beepiest iron. I just turned it on. You think it beeps to tell me it's hot? That's probably why it beeps so much. <laughs> And I, I did the bunny, and then I'm like, you know, it's Easter. It's a spiritual thing. It's not just about bunnies. All right. So to keep the towel under control, now I can touch that all day long and not get dirty. This is me being stained from it. Uh-oh. Just knock something down where it doesn't belong. It's because my quiltlets were not where they belong. <laughs> and I know Amy's thinking, maybe Tina too. Because they're starting to gang up. I know Tina will be happy if you if you join the VIP group, so she'll have someone else to gang up with me on. Some people tease me more than others. So what I want to do is get the towel to be in control. Looks like the video is working good, huh? I'm not touching another setting as long as I live. That's what my son said I should do. Stop touching the settings. You know you did. There isn't like something that just goes in there and messes with the settings. It's just me trying to make everything perfect for you guys when we're live. Thank you, Madeline. I keep thinking about Debonair Bear. Debonair Bear was a bear pattern that released in the 70s or maybe the early 80s and it's a teddy bear with soft, soft sculptured face and he has he wears a tuxedo uh, that would be a fun class to teach I used to teach it live when we had our store <laughs> partners in crime the sarcastic the sarcastic sisters <laughs> So what this does is it makes it so I don't have to worry about the towel sliding un beneath the hoop and then you're st you've stitched it to your to your frame. If you've ever done that before, give me a thumbs up. Share your suffering with others. So it's nice to know that you're not the only one that has something like that happen to you. And these quiltlets are just safety pins and elastic straps that we offer pre-cut for quilting so that you can have your quilt also under control when quilting with these. Now I want a quilt. All right, that's probably enough. So anything you ever sew, if it's big and it's in the way, even like putting a zipper on a skirt, it's an A-line skirt and you've just got all this skirt, you can roll it up pin it and then sew that zipper without having to keep moving your fabric all around. Okay, now I gotta thread this. One of the things I use when doing embroidery is my little elbow bolster pillow. This is in the inside of my, the pattern is inside of the school. That is a free pattern for the entire school. And there's a video associated with it. And in that pattern, I tell you which video, which season, and which episode. That's why I say the season and the episode. This is season three, episode 15 of Fabrically Speaking Live. Because when you get hundreds of videos, it's hard to find some when you're just looking. You like the Sisters of Sarcasm? <laughs> Should I make you guys a t-shirt? Bye, Madeline. C 
see you on the replay. So when I finish going live, I don't have time always to change it from saying live to not live in the description. And that's what confuses people. I have to go through and edit all my videos and change things on them. It's always good to have the pattern right near to follow. Especially if you did what I did, which smeared it. And if you do the, if you iron this on first, you can't smear it. So I'm gonna do the cross first. This is one of the reasons why you can get good at embroidery with this is that you have the ability to put these little handles in the holes and you move your fingers. <laughs> this is such a big tell. You move your fingers instead of your hands and trying to move your hands to move the hoop. So it feels more like coloring than embroidery. For those of you who ordered some of the denim thread and we didn't have enough for the orders, all of a sudden everybody oiled, ordered this royal blue. So that was sold out quick. I want to know why. And I'm thinking, maybe you guys are thinking about 4th of July coming up. I don't know. It's a little early for that. We're going to bring the bobbin thread up. It's a little bit ref more reflective. Sorry for the shine on there. Maybe I can reduce that. It's not much better, is it? And you really just have to hold your finger down on the threads for just a, a few stitches. And when I tie a knot, I move away and come back and then move away again. And now I'm going to cut those threads. We have three pairs of scissors that are ergonomic and have micro serrations. And I'm... I don't know where my large ones are. Ah, I know what it was. I tried integrating a new thing into my sewing area, and that's not a good thing. So this is where I was putting things from an episode, and then I forgot to put them back. So I'm better at putting things back. There's my large scissors. Best scissor to use for this is super universal, at, at least the 8012. I think just because some of these areas are pretty small, I am gonna use the 8012 today. Or, that's right, I have a top stitch needle on there. I'm gonna leave it in. So, when you have a thick thread, This is a 90 14, um, this is a 40 weight and that's in the needle and this is the 80 weight in the bobbin. So you can see it's significantly thinner than this. That allows us to lay more thread on top without adding bulk on the bottom. I wasn't able to cut all the way down with the large but with the small scissors I can get all the way down to the stabilizer. elbow down on my bolster pillow. So this is the position that I'm in. <laughs> this is the position I'm in. So elbow down. This hand kind of just rests on the 
on the hoop itself, on the outer ring of the hoop beneath all of that fabric that you can't really see right now, but it is beneath there. <laughs> it's an octagon shape and the fabric is stuck within the octagon shape. So I can see the parameter or the perimeter, the limitations within the hoop. If it weren't so bright in here, I cut my thread, cut my thread right off. Yes, I did. Got too close. There's no thread in that needle now. I don't know how I did that actually. I must have, these aren't the, you know what? I think I've gotten used to a stronger glass set of glasses and I took them out of here. So I don't need these. I already have those, but these are my 225s. I'm up to 250, I guess. Oh, I never thought I was ever going to need those. The bobbin thread is still secured, though. It was just the needle thread that I cut. You can also secure the end of your thread by deliberately sewing over it and having it stay in there and then cutting the thread. And you could do that with the bobbin thread up as well. Or if you have a knot stitch on your machine, even actually the knot stitch doesn't work when you're free motion. This is free motion. What does that mean? It means there's no foot and feed dog interaction so that you have free motion of the fabric. Hi, Claire. Whoopsie. <laughs> My first whoopsie of the day. Just double checking to make sure that I am within the perimeter. In other words, the color on my template that I printed out with my inkjet printer. Oh, my feed dogs are up, so I'm gonna lower them. Even though there is no feed dog interaction, they were moving up and down. And when I'm getting this close to the hoop, I don't wanna have any chance of it pushing the hoop from beneath. And this is the design that we're doing today for those of you who popped in later than everyone else. One of the things that makes your embroidery look good or not is the stitch direction. So sorry about this reflection. Our stick and rinse does not have that. I have to be able to see as well. So that's with no light. Let me try just the sewing machine light. I see better that way though. You guys see better with it like that? It's a little better, huh? I think I'm gonna. If I take this down a little bit, maybe the balance of the two. It's just so harsh on the camera. I'm gonna change the setting on that camera real quick. A little better. It's a little better. I'm going to probably just do an outline in a minute and do outline all the flowers so that you can see where they are. Where's my handle? Did I take it out? That's a habit I have. Carry my handle off with me somewhere. You know where I put it? I put it in my presser thing so I was good at least where I put it so what we have here is what's holding the towel in the frame 
is our stick and tear stabilizer, which has a tree frog, a green frog on the label. So I can use it a straight stitch and only use a straight stitch. If I want to cover up more of the towel at a time, then I would sew with a slower running machine and move the hoop faster. That's one method. The direction that you move this also will make it easier or harder for you. This is one time I should have gone with a bigger frame just for filming. Just to make it easier on myself, I'm going to use a zigzag stitch and come down and cut that as a straight line using my widest width, which is a seven millimeter width. So simply the machine's going to lay down more thread for me and I'm lowering my thread tension down to three. Now the needle's going to swing left and right, which is more intense. So you got to know where that needle's going to come down. And this is sometimes I get quiet. If I have to think, I get quiet. So now I'm going to pull or push the towel away from me and just keep it straight. I don't do that all the time with you guys, so I had to hold my breath. <laughs> Not really, but I had to be quiet. I can't find my handles. Oh, it's over there. That's why. Better to have it on this side. So you have eight holes on the frame to get the best position so that you can rest your elbow. And now I'm going to continue using the zigzag stitch because I don't do this very often. So I thought I'd show you. And I'm going to come up here. This is a good design to use a zigzag stitch because we don't want to move the hoop in a different direction. So we're going to pretty much be moving straight up and down or side to side, but never rotating the hoop with a zigzag stitch. Well, not, not I shouldn't say never, at least not until you're advanced. So now we don't want it to, to have a bunch of s sections like that. We want to have it look smooth when we're finished. So I'm going to stitch up into that and then come down and go up into this and come down. Moving the hoop always now side to side. It's going to blend in those straight edges. And you can kind of scribble if you're comfortable doing like one half of the, the area that you're going to embroider at a time. And go back in and cover up any spaces that you didn't cover up on your way down. You can sew slower than I am, but after you get really good at using the hoops, you'll probably want ways to go faster. If you're new to the Octa hoops, you're probably going to want to go faster. Uh, no, I don't think that's ever going to happen. But I get emails. I get people asking, okay, I now I'm good at the straight stitch technique. Now I want it to go faster and this is it using a zigzag stitch at your widest possible width when it's logical to do so because if we're stitching in a really small area we don't want to use a really wide stitch in those areas we want to use smaller so you can see how it's blending nicely and it kind of has that wood look that a cross has and I'm going to clean up this edge here Now it's super important how you tie a knot with the zigzag stitch. If I cut that thread, it's going to unravel. So we want to switch to straight stitch and do some stitches, some smaller stitches in place. Now you don't have to cut your thread at all. You can just raise the foot and then move over to the next area, lower the foot. And the reason you do that is to release the tension on the thread so that your thread will let you travel that far. And this is what you call a carryover stitch. And what's nice about using the ink is the ink is going to stay in there forever. 
So there will always be that brown shade beneath to cover up the white towel beneath it. I'm so sorry that I have this much glare, you guys. Without light, you still have glare. That's why we need our stick and rinse. Seven millimeter wide zigzag. Make sure you change your tension back down one number less than normal. I'm going to outline all the flowers in a minute. Maybe it won't bother you as much then. So my left hand is on the frame and my right hand is holding onto the little handle. Going down in my width of my stitch, going all the way down to a four to do the smaller areas. And then when I come in here, there's a point that I'm trying to meet. Well, you can kind of see that, huh? Maybe I can turn off another light. I'm going to try that. I'm going to turn... Oh, I didn't turn that light on. What can I do? I'm going to put the bunny or bunny basket somewhere. Try to block off some extra light. Seems like the light coming from over here is what's doing it. If I don't have the light on at all on the sewing machine, then I can't see. Now you can't see at all, right? Because it's too dark. Can you see that better, you guys? That better? I know you can't see the details. I can't really see them that well either because I smeared it. Whoa. What did I change to the wrong width? Oh, I was going to go down. Down to a two on the width so I can get into that little area. So to make it more exciting or easier for you guys to watch, I'm going to outline all of the flower areas with black thread or a purple-ish thread. So you're all happy. And I think you'll, you'll have more fun watching. If not, I could just stop and go, there you go. This is how you get a towel ready. After I outline it too, maybe I can get rid of all the extra and maybe that will reduce some of the glare. And I think black might be too much. Now I got to hold light stuck to my foot. So if we look at this, That's a, like a navy blue, then we have black, and then we have this 
dark plum color. Do I even have to tell you? I'd say that plum is the right color because you guys love purples. It's going to go nicely with everyone, everything as well. When we first started doing machine embroidery like that, we used to we used to have paper and we would print through paper or stitch through the paper. It was so bad for the needle. And then it was also equally bad for your fabric because a damaged needle damages fabric. But we didn't have very many options back then. We didn't even have the ability to print color. Make sure you raise the foot whenever removing thread from your sewing machine and then remove it from the needle before pulling the thread out. It's a very, very pretty dark plum color, yes. And one of my stickers was popping off. I think it was this one. So I got to write the number down. Come on, pen write. As soon as I said that, it started writing. The next color I'm using is the Polyflask 9800. And you know what I'm going to do for the VIP group, for the pattern that I put in there? I'm going to lighten up some of the areas to make it easier for you to embroider. Polyfast. 9800. Under the description, there is a link to the Polyfast thread and the Deco Bob thread that I'm using in the bobbin. So I use a P is in Poly and an F is in Fast. Polyfast by Wonder Phil from Canada. So if I switched right now to my stick and rinse stabilizer, I would see better, you would see better, but then you can't get it right now. It's, we're, we're at least three months, maybe four months from having it. But I could rip this off and stick my stick and rinse down there and we'd all have a better experience. It's a little too late because I already started. Okay, so I have the plum-ish color, dark, dark plum. I'm going to outline it and then you'll know the borders of the flowers. Another option for you to do on this is to ink, you know, using Sharpie markers. You can trace on our hold light from the pattern that I created those of you in the VIP group. All right, Claire, what are you doing? Oh, I'm switching cameras. <laughs> and I could have done that with a marker as well for you, but we're going to have to outline anyway. What are you telling me I didn't do a machine? The, the machine is threaded, isn't it? Sometimes, sometimes it's right and I'm wrong. And then, oh yeah, so it says it's not threaded. That means I, I messed up. We trust the machine so we don't end up with bird's nest on the bottom. It's a good habit to hold on to the end of the thread so you know you get it through that take up lever. This time I know for sure it's in there. Oopsie. Second oopsie of the day. Okay. 
Jeez. I'm not the only one doing it, though. I saw someone do that recently. It's something I was watching. I go, maybe I watch that show too much. Hi, Lorinda. Always thread the machine with the foot up. I probably didn't. That's most likely what it was. Okay, I can see the design right now, so I'm going to stick with that. And I'm just drawing an outline using a straight stitch. Because this design is designed with an outline. And I know everywhere there's color on this sticker, it is not near the hoop. So it's safe to sew to the end. And even though I know that, and I've double checked, I still had butterflies thinking I might hit the hoop. So you always want to double check for your, for your brain's sake. So it won't panic on you. These are some stems. This is going to be green thread. Back up here to my yellow tulip. Isn't that a fun word to say? I like saying tulip. All right, a little bit dorky. Yes, I can be a little dorky. And I'm referring to my pattern. And it does have a little bit of this coming up. I think I'm going to cut out this one tulip behind it because it's not even, it doesn't even show up. Yeah, I'll just do it. The thread will make a big difference. If you've ever seen an embroidery machine run, you'll notice they, they kind of do the same thing, even though the machine's not really looking. It goes around and does the outline stitch first. And the inside of the tulip has lines that curve in to show the inside of it. edge first. This is partly because the hold light, I have two layers of hold light on here. So one of you was in the VIP and watched that embroidery. Do you remember the cover up still releasing ink? I think I would have been a mess if I had. Definitely easier to see without this on top. But I filmed the whole butterfly with this on top. Must have had better light set up.
Is that making it better, you guys? Yes or no? So now I'm going to tie a knot by going a few stitches in place and hop up here. See how the needle pulls? So I re re release the foot whenever pulling up like that so you don't do that to the thread. Those of you wondering why I don't lower the needle, you don't need to because you can see where you're coming down. If you feel that you need to, do it. But I don't like having my needle always stop down. It causes trouble that you're not aware of. The more often you raise and lower your foot, the more likely you are to have the thread slip off the take-up lever and end up with a bird's nest halfway through your work. One of you is working on a tulip quilt design. Are you done? Well, the whole thing had like a kind of a dark outline. So yeah, it was a dark green, but I'm gonna go over it with green. So if there's a little hint of it, it's, it's gonna be okay. Kind of looks like some patchwork fabric under there right now. Now if I do that, I was I did give you the design with an outline version of the cross and a non-outline version of the cross. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do the outline on the cross simply so that I can tear away the majority of this stabilizer. And make it so you guys can won't have as much reflection. And this is me driving over the same area. I want to make sure that it's cut, that there's stitches all the way around the outline. That's an area I have to go over again. Raise the foot and you can hop over. Lower the foot. And I'm doing very small movement of the hoop, making the smallest possible stitches I can along the farthest outside edge. Hop over, that's a short distance, so it's not hard on the thread. Okay, going around the cross. And how you get short stitches is fast machine, slow hands. Fast machine, slow hands. Whoops, come over here. I like an outline anyway around embroidery. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is cut this off, and I'll do that the other camera. Maybe you can see better. We'll see how that works out. It's just a shiny, just too shiny. Get rid of some of the outside of it. Where's my tweezers? World's best tweezers. Gosh, those of you who have them, don't you agree? Oh my gosh, there's life changing. Got such static cling too. Yeah, 
Usually you wait to do this till after you're done. But this way the camera will only have a little area of shine reflecting back at it. Hey Brenda, I sent out your presser today. I hope that I didn't get to check for your response. I hope you didn't change your mind and want pink. I said goodbye to it because I've grown to enjoy it. <laughs> but every time I show it, I'm like, I probably shouldn't be showing this one. I'd rather always use this presser the one I hand painted, <laughs> but people started asking if they could get one of these. And I wonder if it's out of focus a little bit too. No, nah, it looks like it's good. Maybe I can get it a little bit more in focus. Okay, well, we'll see how this goes. How many hours have I been on? And you don't have to report because I, I can see the clock. Hi, Ellen. This is the real design, but without light shining on the shiny surface, the camera has to fight with it. Oh, you might, might have been talking about the presser. For, for, I did a few hand-painted pressers and sold them off. Each one sold for over $300. But I put a lot of hours into each one. The reason I'm removing all of this excess around here is to reduce glare for the camera. See, our stick and rinse doesn't have as much shine. See how much less it reflects on the light, so it's easier to see through. Sorry for the crunchy sounds. I had time for a while, so I was painting those, but um, I don't have time to, to eat right now, so... Maybe we'll do a grand prize of one of those. Make that a drawing as well. Would you guys like that? A hand painted presser drawing? I think I'm going to make you guys actually sew something to enter the giveaways. So if you want to do a giveaway, you actually have to do a project and submit a picture. And then when you get the prize, you have to take a picture of yourself with the prize and tag us in it. Hope I don't regret doing all that right now. We don't want to get the stick and tear loose. And the stick and tear is the stabilizer beneath that's holding it all on there. This is a good time to cut away my carryover stitches so that they don't get caught on things. Cute little design though. I made it small. I'm, try I'm keeping myself on smaller projects. Still not getting everything done. I 
have an idea. If you guys have a little bit of patience, I'm going to grab some Sharpie markers and then I'm going to color over that. And I think you'll see better. So it'll be more enjoyable for you. If you have, just give me a minute and I will once again leave you with music. Be right back. You guys have a bunch of different colors of Sharpie markers. They come in a wide variety of different colors. So because the color is beneath that, I think that's why I didn't have trouble when I embroidered the butterfly because with the butterfly printed on the stabilizer. So I'm going to turn off that music for next time. Now I will color. I enjoy coloring. I know you guys are so patient. I was like, I don't even have to ask them if they're going to be patient. You guys are the most patient. You're sarcastic, but you're patient. Not all of you are sarcastic. Some of you are really sweet all the time. Or at least you don't verbalize what you're really thinking. <laughs> all right, let's do this. All right, really don't want to strain to do this. Ugh. Moving things near the computer, that's usually the danger, danger. Yeah, that's working. That'll do it. I know some of you really enjoy it when I have trouble and then I work it out live. So there you go. Just don't get it on the towel, which I did a little bit. So I'm just getting a base down and then I can 
bring in the different shades so I don't forget to change my color thread and I need to now that I can see better this pen does not want to write anymore there's a little a little orange to just kind of show me where some variances and we'll try the brighter green got on the towel too this is why I shouldn't have removed the whole thing oh well get that loop out of the way but what's really neat is the are these stabilizers are permanent so The loops will never find their way back through the thread, which is the problem when you don't use a topper and you embroider on a towel or velour or velvet, any of those. I didn't have enough colors, so if I can do this to change that green to another color, just so my brain is reminded. You able to see it better or is it any better? I don't know. We'll do light pink first. It actually would be pretty with just the outline and one solid color for each flower, don't you think? I don't know oh, it's a sharpie <laughs> like it's a it's a highlighter I'm not sure it's gonna stay but it it should oops this one I wish I could hear your voices right now Okay, and then I'm going to do this color a little bit on this. This one has a bunch of colors running through it, which is kind of silly. I should have just done one color tulip, made it faster to film. I'll probably just to make it quicker for the embroidery process. I shouldn't say what I'm going to do ahead of time because I usually change my mind. As long as this helped, then it was all worth it. Show you what could happen to you and how you can go work around it. And why it's a good idea to have the pattern handy. This one has some orange hints too. Okay. So if I do this for the brown, now we're coloring instead of embroidering, <laughs> both of which I enjoy. Orange and green makes brown, but I don't know if it'll work on here. I'll just get my Sharpie dirty, probably. Yeah. All right. Getting there. No matter what, it's going to be beautiful.
So there was a couple spots I could have done a better outline. Got my handle in the hole so that I can draw. Oh, my fingers are dry. I need to lotion up. I just muted to sneeze and scared the living daylights out of Tinkerbell. She was sound asleep. Where did I do my lotion? I carry it off somewhere? No, there it is. Poor dog. <laughs> The older Tinkerbell and I get, the more I scare the daylights out of her. Oh, so much better. I washed my hands a lot today. Except for sometimes this is a little slippery, but this is the one I use, I get asked. This is the Gold Bond Healing with Aloe. Sometimes I put it on and then I grab a tissue and I just kind of wipe it off the tips of my fingers. Hi, Stephanie. Welcome. Okay. <laughs> Nothing like live video when it's live and you don't know what's going to happen and something goes wrong. You figure out how to get around it. Not going to waste a towel. That's for sure. Now I outlined, but I was going to fix one spot. And I drew the line so that I knew where to draw it. And I should have brought my bobbin thread up. This machine does allow me not to have to, though. My elbow pillow moved. My little pillow. It goes under my elbow because with our hoops, you're able to rest your whole body. And then I want to make sure that my design is in a good spot. And this is what you're seeing here. This was Mr. Bunny trying to keep, <laughs> keep the uh, light from invading so I'll have him stare at you guys a little bit as I'm afraid to move things too far and this way I could have my design within my line of sight I'll fold it so I can see it without having to look around as I go because you'll be tempted to not stop when you do this it gets too much fun There was a, I just totally changed the design of the inside of this one tulip. So I'm going to switch my thread to the brown and finish the cross and go back to the normal procedure of starting with the item that's furthest away. If you only cut your, bob your needle thread and don't cut your bobbin thread, then you don't have to keep bringing up your bobbin thread. Now is light better? <gasps> Look at that. We worked around it. We can both see now. I know I got to do the bunny, but the bunny is going to be a pattern. I don't, I'm not going to promise that I can have that done before, before giving you enough time to make it before Easter. I already have two patterns in progress. I got to drink my carrot juice. I'm going to mute for a second, you guys. All right, I unmuted. And now 
My brown thread, what did I do with it? Uh oh. Pardon my reach. And for your reference, it's 92, 9324. Sure hope that's the one I was using. Just in case my sticker falls off. 9324. Write it bigger and that's nice too because they have little tiny stickers. I'm glad I was able to figure something out to make us all happy. Okay, so if you've watched me embroider before, you probably have not seen me use a zigzag stitch, and that is what I was doing on the cross, and I will continue and explain for those of you who came in later. This is, by the way, April 7th of 2022, and if you're coming in now, at this time, you probably are watching live. I lowered, lowered the presser foot on the machine and my feed dogs are down because I was getting really close to the frame with the needle and it's safer to have the feed dogs down because they, they pushed on the frame, not for any other reason. Because frequently I won't, I didn't need to bring my bobbin thread up because it was already up, but normally you would. So some stitches to tie a knot, those are just straight stitches. And in this area, it comes down, so I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch with only a two width for that area, for just this little section. Making sure we know where the needle's gonna swing left and right. So when we know the right swing is coming down, we wanna we have that on the border. And now that I've done that, I'm going to come up and I'm going to finish that, that section. So I never, I don't have to go back down there afterward and switch to a seven millimeter wide width, which is the widest my machine will do. And because I'm using such a wide width to take pressure off of the needle using a width of seven, I lower my tension at least one number less than normal. My machine was normal at four. I took it down to a three tension. Now we need to make sure we know where that right swing is going to go. And I can see that it is lined up with the outline. And we only move the hoop straight up and down and left to right when using a zigzag stitch. Unless I say otherwise, there is a technique that I'll teach you as you guys get more advanced. But you got to be ready for that. That'll be an intermediate to advanced lesson. When I go live, I like to keep it not G-rated, but beginner-rated. So I'm feathering in the stitch to blend from one end to the other so that you can't see that I used a zigzag stitch or that I drew that straight line. If I had done a straight line, a straight line, straight line, straight line, it would have looked like a bunch of logs. Switch to the straight stitch, tie it off, lift the foot, I'm hopping over to this area here where there is still, all of that orange is gonna be the log. Whoops. Hello, hello, are any of you there? You're not texting very much. I gotta sneeze a minute. We have so many beautiful, beautiful flowers blooming up here right now. All the cherry blossoms are blooming and the apple blossoms. So if I were to use 
a zigzag stitch, I would have to turn the hoop the other direction. I'm going to do this now with a slower running machine and a straight stitch. So the machine is running slower and I'm moving my hands bigger. Or I'm moving the hoop faster with the machine running smaller or running slower. <laughs> and it makes it look like a zigzag stitch. So this is how even if you have an antique sewing machine, and all you have is a straight stitch, you can get the same look of a zigzag stitch. You can even go bigger than that. Just run the machine really slow and see how big I can make my stitch. And that's easier with speed control to do such large stitches. It's the shape of the octagon that makes it possible for us to do these gigantic stitches without it causing our fabric to get puckered or swallowed up within that wide stitch. So now I'm mimicking a seven millimeter wide zigzag stitch. And I'm gonna soften up that first section that I did. So even though I'm running the machine slower, I'm covering more area in a slow, in a, in less amount of time. got to get my rhythm going. It also makes it so you can taper without having to change the width of your stitch while you're tapering. How many of you have your machine on right now? If you have your machine on and you're actually sewing while I'm sewing, I want to know what you're sewing and I want you to say, yeah, I'm sewing. Or you can write sewing. Hi, Millie. Well, thank you for chiming in now. I'm glad you're enjoying the project today. I am too. I needed some Easter towels. I have this in my bunny towel now for Easter. Hop over and um, back to a slower running machine, bigger hand movement. And while the zigzag stitch is faster for some things, this is this is faster because I don't have to change the width of the stitch to taper down. I just change how far I move my hands with each stitch. Free motion embroidery is so freeing. <laughs> Hop over. And I want to keep this this also a little bit bulkier than a straight stitch look even though it's such a small area. Tie it off, hop over. Okay, get your rhythm. And that's me telling myself to get my rhythm, get my, what speed do I need? Kind of like, gotta get, gotta find your groove. <laughs> How slow do you need the machine to go to get the same effect? And going up and down as you, as you sew, makes it easier to see that you're clearing or covering up the surface below. But what's nice is the stabilizer makes it so that terry cloth loops are never gonna ever pop up. Not just while I'm embroidering, but ever, even after it's been washed. So now I'm going to do the rest sideways so you guys can see a little bit better. And I'm going to continue to use a zigzag motion without a zigzag stitch. So that would have been me having to go down all the way down to a one and a half width. Now I'm at a three. Now I'm at a four. Now I'm at a seven. Now I'm at a 20, which your machine can't do. That's a 20 millimeter wide zigzag switch. Not neat. Something you can't do with a regular zigzag stitch. Hopping over, here we go. Now we're going to cover this in. Get your groove. Not moving my hoop in any direction other than left and right so that I don't end up with my log looking weird at the bottom. Stitch direction is key to having your embroidery look good. 
And I am getting in contact with someone that does digitizing. As I create these little embroidery designs, we will be making them available for those of you with embroidery machines. Hop over. But right now we are satisfying the needs of all of those without embroidery machines. As this is free motion, done with a regular straight stitch. Even though you see a zigzag stitch being sewn, it is not, it is a straight stitch. And I am moving my fingers in the zigzag motion and this little knob is in a hole. Just like you see here, as you get eight holes and eight different sides of an octagon shape, that's why they're called the octi hoops. Hand sewing. So this, Karen, you'll be able to play this, replay this to find out about the design. You can immediately watch these videos after I stop being live. And I think you can even start watching behind in the past. However, the chat is only available to you while I'm live. And after I end, the chat is like hidden for a while. I think the YouTube has to, I think Facebook, it's, a, it's available right away, but in YouTube it has to propagate or something, populate, I don't know what the term is they use. Okay, I think I'm gonna do the, the stems. Yeah, cause they're what? Farther away than the flowers. So I'm just going to pick out my colors. Uh-oh, I just dropped a spool of thread by Tinkerbell. And you know what? That reminds me, I dropped one the other day by her, and I never got it. She has two spools of thread. She's like gathering thread. I've been dying to use this color, but every time I pull it out, you guys always go, no, not that one. It's Easter, doesn't it look, doesn't that remind you of Easter? Okay, so we're, we're looking at the pattern to make our decision. And I'm thinking this one, those two. Do you agree? The needle I'm using right now is a top stitch needle. And it's a 9014 top stitch. You can use a 9014 top stitch needle or universal or super universal. Pretty much any of the 9014s with a 40 weight thread, you'll have less chance of your thread shredding. You could go down to an 8012 needle though. And the reason that I have a top stitch needle in here is because I thought I would test it out and see how well it performed. And it will put on what I was doing and it performed really well. So it hasn't shredded. So it's a good option. So you can look at the price of each one of these needles and go shredding thread or spend more money on the needle I'm using. Shredding thread and getting mad and wanting to strangle my sewing machine or spend a little bit more money on that needle. And now when you compare the more expensive needles, you can go, okay, this one worked great. So which one's more expensive? And, I, and I'm, I'm not really sure 
how they compare in price, whether the top stitch needle is more or less, and it work, it's working great. So I'm really pleased. Mr. Bunny is staring at you all. So I'm going to do the light colors before I do the dark colors. Light green first, and I'm going to do all of the stems and all of the leaves before I go ahead and switch to the dark. And I'm actually thinking about doing the stems a, a different way so you guys learn something fun. Because that's what this is all about. Fabrically Speaking Live is about how much fun can we have on a Thursday. More fun when we have the, the uh, what, do you, the, what did I call you guys? The sis sarcastic sisters? <laughs> all right, here we go. That's right, I'm supposed to have the other camera on when I thread the machine. I struggle because my arms are short and I did a few years back break my left shoulder. So this arm doesn't go up all the way. So I'm a little bit awkward when I thread the machine. I didn't raise the foot. So for those of you who have been told to cut your thread above the needle and pull it out that way, if you raise the foot and pull the thread out toward you before you go and pull it out of the machine, I haven't really had any trouble. I would say that in the past when polyester thread used to have a lot of knots in it, we used to have more trouble when we'd pull back on the thread or pull it back out than we do now. But I'm finding some snag here so I'm gonna have to waste some thread I'll let you guys see I don't know what I did there but it looks like I got a knot on it and you can't you can't take a chance on that and pull it out till it's no longer so what did I do I tied a knot so if I can get that knot out then I don't have to waste all that thread but I'm not gonna put you through that so waiting for me to untie that knot Say something sarcastic. Go for it. As long as it's not mean and cruel. Yeah, now you now you have this stress that I have to be sarcastic because Claire says I am. Those who have been in here enough have seen it. My needle is down. I can't see my buttons. There we go. I love that needle threader. <sighs> so I'm going to be pulling out my embroidery machine. It's been in there for a few years. I have never used it. Oh, it's probably going to make some of you sick. I, it's a Destiny. One of the top model machines. And it has the ability to... You can put a drawing under it and it can bring in and create it into an embroidery design. And I'm wondering if I can't use that to digitize my embroidery designs. Do any of you have that machine? And can you tell me if that is possible? And that would be true also of the, the Brother sewing machine because Brother makes the baby lock. If you have the Brother 8500 embroidery, big embroidery machine. If you put a picture underneath and it scans it in and then you're able to do that design, are you able to output from your machine to create, to create a design? Because if so, I can move quickly on getting some of my free motion embroidery designs for those of you who have an embroidery machine and you'd rather do embroidery using the push a button. Oh, how boring is this? No, the push a button and make something else method of embroidery. Pulling up the thread out from the top mess up the tension discs. No. Sometimes you can get thread stuck in your tension discs, though. And I did show, oh, that was in the VIP. Showed you guys how to clean out your tensions. So if you ever have your tension just like, if there's no tension, even though the foot's down, even though you threaded the machine with the foot up, and you lower the foot and there's just no tension on your thread, you may have some thread stuck in in your tension discs 
And then what you do is take a piece of It's not a bad idea to use white fabric as well. Make sure it's clean. If you have the kind for eyeglasses, that's even better. And you can fold your fabric in half. Make sure you're not putting in the frayed edges into your tension disc. You want to put a folded piece of fabric in the tension disc and you bring it in, lower the foot, and then pull up. And then do that again and again several times and if there's anything stuck in there we want to pull it up we don't want to bring it in to the machine and periodically every once in a while I will polish my tension discs but if you're using if you're using polyester thread you're not going to have as much trouble as you would if you're using silk rayon or cotton because the dyes in those can come off of them easier that's why they say polyester is color fast it doesn't fade in the sun and you have more issue with that with cottons rayons and silks they're natural fibers they rot they decay they fade they bleed they shrink and polyester doesn't so well I already have the baby lock and I know it scans so I don't want to have to get another machine Baby Lock gave me the machine. <laughs> Stephanie, you must have been in the live VIP because I think that's when I did it. I think I did it when I showed the... Was it when I did the bunny? The bunny tail? I don't know. There's a lot of videos, you guys. I've done a lot of videos. Too many for me to remember. Trying to think if I can't catalog it somehow easy inside of the school. Break down the videos and have like a list and you can just click on the title and then it starts to play. All in good time. Okay, I'll get back to this. I love the questions though. Questions, questions. Otherwise I'm the only one talking even though I'm the only one that can be heard. So this is my light color. Oh, that's the green. That's right, I was gonna show you. So we could go up and down on the stem and using a straight stitch. I don't know if you can see. And I am gonna do a little bit of that, just going up and down. Some of my stabilizer was come loose. I pulled it and it came out of there. Okay, so I've done some. Now I'm going to switch to a zigzag stitch and go to a two. And see, might be a two and a half. We'll see. Two, oh, that's way too small. Three. I used to know my millimeters better than that. Okay. So now I am going to get my handle in the hole, elbows down, shoulders relaxed, cut that thread so it doesn't distract me. I don't know where I put my thread snips. And I'm going to pull st straight down, but moving. So when you use the zigzag stitch, you can move up and down and side to side, but you cannot rotate the hoop. But you can come down and swing or sway the hoop. And this is a perfect time to practice that technique. And we, it is going to look better if your embroidery is lifted higher than the terry cloth. So using a zigzag stitch on a towel will always give you a more luxurious looking stitch. I'm going to go a little wider. Three and a half. Now I'm going to go a little bit narrower. Go down to two and a half. And that's just because I drew it that way. Come down fast. Another option. Go up slow. So you're f creating a bump. 
a bumpy stem, a round, a round looking bumpy stem, instead of it being flat. And then I will go over it again with a straight stitch and go around the outside of my zigzag stitches because it just looks nicer. And I will do that again with the dark green. Now it's time to do this one. This is a good opportunity to use the wider zigzag stitch, but I'm just gonna go ahead and it'd be easier to use a straight stitch and First the straight stitch to anchor the stabilizer to the towel using shorter stitches. Now to give it form. This because of the, 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 ugh, the swerve in the branch, it, it's better to have the stitch go from right to left at an angle. And this is me running the machine slow and moving the hoop slow or faster than big stitches, slow machine, faster hands. But my hands are still not moving very fast because I'm running the machine super slow. Because why stress yourself out? You don't have to go that fast, but I can, I can go faster. Frequently I regret it when I do things like that though. So if you just, just kept the slow speed you would you would have done a perfect job well as perfect as any human could be so see how that has a different form to it than this stem going side to side you'll be able to see better when I pull this off after I'm done so that's the straight stitch so I tie a knot even though it's a straight stitch and I'm gonna hop over and do the farthest away just get it out of the way Coming down again to anchor it, anchoring the stabilizer to the terry cloth towel. So that stabilizer can never come up. The Sharpie ink on, on there on top of the inkjet ink is not gonna come off. Now I could do the zigzag going side to side, but this is pretty much the same width all the way down. So it's easier to do a zigzag stitch. Three and a half millimeter wide width. On a zigzag stitch, reducing the thread tension, taking it down to three. If it's normal at four, and my width was three and a half, I, uh, three is better. You can go down fast, come back up fast. You could do that a couple times to really put a lot of thread down and then go slow. And that means move your hand slow, laying a large amount of thread on. And it almost gives you a corded look like there's cording beneath there. It's very pretty. Straight stitch, tie knot, just by move, staying in the same area. Come over here, tie knot. That stitch isn't very big at all. It's so cute, they're little stems. If your dogs are down, in case you're wondering, if you can't lower your feed dogs, you can still do this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go side to side on this stem because that's the direction it's, it is. It's pointing over here. In fact, I think that's actually a leaf and it crosses over the top of the two stems. And if it is a leaf, then I want bigger stitches coming at an angle. So this is me just going like this with my fingers on the handle in the hole that is over over to the side over here so that I can put my arm down on the machine. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. This is a little pillow on my elbow so my elbow doesn't get sore. It is my bolster pillow pattern free in the, the clay, create with Claire Rowley <laughs> bound at sorry create.clairowley.com the link is at the top of the chat and it is at the top of the the description of the video when you when we're not live and this is April 7th of 2022 and it is 4 30 Pacific Standard Time right now which is the same as Mountain Standard Time right now 
because Arizona doesn't change time and blah, blah, blah. I'm starting to feel like I'm at a show. You're back. You had to attend a Zoom meeting. Welcome. All right, here we go. Which button do I push? Starting to get that almost time to be done feeling. So you can watch these on the replay. I'm going to go back down now, straight down, because that stem is going up and down. And I'm drawing with my elbows down, shoulders relaxed. The stem is off to the side, so I'm going to go in that direction. And the, the needle can't, or the, the camera can't keep up with my speed. And we want to keep that, that one on top of this one. So I hop over. Bigger stitches over the top. Sorry, I had to think what's the best way of doing this. This is the stem. That was the stem. Oh, well. <laughs> we want to create a stem look, so we're going to do a zigzag. Slow down the machine. Zigzag, zigzag. But I'm not using a zigzag. I'm just moving the hoop in a zigzag motion to mimic what I would get from a zigzag stitch so that it looks like a stem. And all I'm doing is moving, I'm, this hand just supports things. The hand that I'm moving the hoop with is the f just my fingers. You don't have to push down. This is, not a, this is not pushing down. This is just like writing on a piece of paper. You hold, you write the pen with the pen in your dominant hand and you support the paper with your non-dominant hand. Now it's going to come over here. So remember, this pattern is part of the VIP group. Part of the benefits of being in the VIP group is they get free pat they get patterns toss to them this is already in there but I am going to make some changes to make it easier for you to embroider out and you can use it for inking as well as I said if you ink it first and embroider over it it's another way of getting the design on your fabric okay and I'm going to anchor this and switch to the dark green. I'm just, just going to anchor it. And you can do a cross hatch to like just go side to side. We just want to make sure that, that that vinyl is stuck to the terry. When it goes through the dryer, it will not shrink in. It's locked onto it. Everything becomes locked to itself. Now I'm not going to cut the bobbin thread because if you do, you have to bring it back up again. Just raise the foot, cut your needle thread. Sheila, you're leaving us. Bye. We have Madeline arrive and Sheila leave. That means I'm on too long. I think I need to cut it short. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, I didn't say the color number. And I don't have my little thing that I put the stuff I use. So I can write notes. 
Is are any of you being my secretary and writing the color numbers down? Are you on vacation watching and not working? Now I'm switching to color number 6487 of the Polyfast line. And I write on the inside of the spool in case my sticker pops off. The color I used previously was 6482. And I put PF on there for Polyfast. I think I used that. Yeah, I used that. I haven't done any yellow yet. That's what I want to do now. I was I was really wanting to do the yellow already. I should have two. Those are the those are just See, I wrote the number on this one. This is why I tell you. I was like, I don't even know what kind of thread that is. It kind of looks like Invisifil and I went, "Oh no, it's not. It's Polyfast." But I would have just laid it down and went, oh no, that's that can't be Invisifil, it's too thick. Do I have the same number? 9118 and 3260. They look very close, too close, I think, for this. So I'm going to use this one because it's really stunning. That's why you watch, Madeline. When you watch, you learn little hacks, sewing tricks, and the older I get, the more things I do to help myself not forget, things I need to remember. I sip on some water. You're not keeping track of the thread colors today, Amy? I count on you for that. <laughs> Usually you tell me what what number so I remember to not forget. But I, I had a little container to put, thing, to put things in I used so that I wouldn't forget. Because I don't write the numbers down in here. I write them down somewhere else. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to use this kind of orangey yellow for the second color. be interesting to see how what what we can do with that big stitch concept to make the tulips more pronounced so right now I'm just using a straight stitch just just going like this while running the machine if I wanted to do a big stitch I would go just like you would if you were using a pen and you wanted to go all the way over there, all the way back. It's so much more relaxing to go on the road, taking the slow road, rather than the fast track. <laughs> but you just slow the machine down. It's perfectly all right. You're supposed to be just enjoying yourself. I'm the one who's supposed to be working. It may not look like I'm working. That's why I look so forward to Thursdays. I get to play. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just 
get that stabilizer stitched down, and then I am going to try and mess around with the big stitch concept. It's really pushing the machine to go that far, and people's fingers would get stuck in the stitch if it was that long. So we'll play around with different things here. I thought I might get away with it, but I'm not. That would, this happened because I didn't change the tension. When I started going really fast, I'd forgotten to check my tension setting. And the faster you sew, the, you need a little bit less tension so that it can flow through the machine faster without as much drag. It's a good time to change, to clip my carryover stitches without cutting the terry cloth loops. <laughs> I didn't have my fingers in the, the holes. It was like drunk, drunk scissor usage without having my fingers in those holes. These are the Appliquick scissors. I had one finger, I had my fingers over there and it was, I couldn't, I couldn't drive them. I can hear I can hear Chase going to Tinkerbell's bed in the office where I gave her treats earlier. His toenails clank on something. But she ate her treats, so must have been disappointing to think he was gonna sneak in and get something of hers only to find out she already ate it. So if this were a flower, we can create dimension several ways. We can create it by using big stitches and we can also create it by adding another color. So I could add one more yellow color here to create a, a larger appearance, which takes longer to sew and we're at two and a half hours now. I said I wasn't gonna do that anymore. So I'm doing the big stitch. So each stitch is the equivalent of about 12 millimeters. Running the machine slow. Slow speed on the machine, fast hands, tension low, so that I don't break the thread by going so far. <laughs> but you are more likely to hear that sound when you do that. You have thread shred. This one is supposed to be light too. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. We're drawing, we're coloring it in. Yeah, I think we do need a third color. I'm not gonna do it though. So I'm going to in incorporate this side to side for that s for the pedal that's off to the in the back, and now moving up and down to create that pedal look, which would be really difficult to achieve with a zigzag stitch. I need to cover that orange ink up. So that kind of makes the petal look like it's bending. I'm starting to want to stop you guys. That's just what happens. Get too tired. And then what happens? I get lazy. It's happened to you guys when you get tired, you go, oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do this. And then you're like, oh, I wish I just stopped when I was tired. I don't like unfinished projects, though. It really bugs me. A 
lot of the time I am running the machine slower so that the camera can keep up with it. Okay, I'm cutting this thread off. Cutting by raising the foot, pulling the needle thread out. This is how you don't end up. I do love you guys so much. How'd you know, Wendy? I, I love it as well as you. I do. I love embroidery. But I'm thinking, I think I'll finish this in the school with the, with the whole school. Do another Zoom, finish this up. And not on a weekend, because I need a weekend. I want my whole weekend so I can finish the patterns that I have to finish. And I will be starting to take some days where I go paddle boarding on our lake. So if you have not yet joined create.clairerowley.com, and the school's actual name is Clay, Create with Claire Rowley, then do so now and you'll be able to watch me finish this up with the school. Let's see. I don't have that many, well, I don't know how many orders came in today. I think I can do this tomorrow. Let's see, what time tomorrow? Would you, if tomorrow's Friday, because, you know, people go out to dinner. I know, I know, because I want to go out to dinner. So maybe we do it at 1, my time tomorrow. It took me a year to be able to stand up for more than a few minutes. And last year, on my paddleboard, the last day that I paddleboarded was the first time I fell off. My daughter was shocked. She's like, you never fell off before that. And I go, no, I, I never gave myself the opportunity to fall off. I just stayed on my knees, you know. And uh, But at one point she goes, you know, it's easier when you stand up than it is when you're kneeling down. And I'm like, you're not 59 and you didn't break your shoulder and fracture your knee. And I got up and then I was up. And by the end of the season, I was up and I was up for three and a half hours paddling around I was in with the geese and the ducks and and then I was almost to the the dock area and I fell off and I went all the way in the water which is blah and then I went I don't know how to get back on when I'm in the water all right so one or two tomorrow maybe we should just do two Two, three, four, five. That's five o'clock your time. That's too late to do it. How about I do it in the morning? How about 11, 12, 1, 2? So that'd be two o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. I'll finish this in the morning tomorrow. 11, 11 my time. 11 California time, Pacific time. So 11 o'clock Pacific time tomorrow, I'm going to do an announcement in the school, let you all know and invite you all to the Zoom chat tomorrow where I finish this up. It won't be very long because I just have the flowers to do. Sound good? I like this idea, see? Changing, this, changing up things a little bit. I don't want to make you feel bad if you can't afford the uh, VIP group, give you guys some extra live stuff where you can talk. Remember, one o'clock? One o'clock what time, Amy? Our, our time? One, two, three, four, that's four o'clock Eastern time. So anyone on the East Coast? Is four o'clock Eastern time too late for a Friday night? That's not that much earlier. Mm. 
No, this is uh, this is a live Zoom chat. So you guys are on camera too. So get your hair and makeup on. And inside of the school, there's docks. Let me show you. So, yeah, I moved a button on my button switcher thingy. Oh, that's why. Oh, it's so funny. Okay. So inside of the school, topics. Nope, it's not where it is. See, I'm tired. Oh, yeah, in here, special instructions and documents. And you click on that. And inside of here is what how to get ready to go live to go in zoom look for the word zoom so this is what you do to get ready for any class and this would be considered a class kind of so you want to get ready for with zoom so these are special instructions i might i probably shouldn't leave them in there but it's all right that they're there that's the cell phone purse pattern it's one of my most popular patterns and it's free and you can watch the the video right there inside I need to add that to another area it I probably already did because you guys go where is that video where is that where's that pattern I can't find it and in the creator groups, go to Fabrically Speaking Live in there. It has topics of its own on the left-hand side, which may be hidden under your, under three lines. We call the hamburger button, techie people. This is where you'll find patterns, free patterns in here. So sometimes I give free patterns to everyone and you can see it's not uncommon. It just keeps going on and on. Free stuff, free stuff. It's just the VIPs get more as they help us buy equipment and help me fund all the supplies and stuff that I need to conduct these shows for you. So I hope that I will see you tomorrow I'm going to make this official. 11 o'clock Pacific Standard Time tomorrow. And I'm going to send you all an invitation. If you're in the school, you have to be in the school. If you're not a member, I may, I may go live on YouTube and announce that we're going live before I go live tomorrow. <laughs> it all depends how organized I am. So, never explored like that? You never clicked around inside the school? Oh, you need to start snooping. Another thing you can do in the school is you can search things. Type in the search windows. Yeah, and then that's another way to find things up. Make up before noon. Yes, Amy. <laughs> I'm going to go out to dinner tomorrow night, so... It's fine with me if I get ready in the morning for tonight or for the nighttime dinner. You know, when I say a sentence with that, that bad or such poor grammar or sentence structure that it's time for me to say goodbye. It is definitely. Yeah, I don't, don't talk about time. It's finally, I can just say Pacific Standard Time. We don't change, so. I don't have to explain anything during Pacific Daylight Time. I can just say Pacific or Eastern Time. The rest of the year, I'm always having to explain that Arizona doesn't change time. So. Um, Stephanie, inside of the VIP, yes. If there's a Zoom chat that we do in the VIP, you, you always have access to those. I store those. It costs money to store videos. I'll probably store this Zoom chat for tomorrow, but it won't be inside the VIP. It'll be in with everybody else. 
it'll be linked to the Zoom chat, which don't disappear. Sometimes I don't, I don't fund the cost of uploading a video. If I don't think it went well, I'm not going to do it. So, but you're VIP, so I store all the videos, all the content for the VIPs is there forevermore, no matter what. So get your hair and makeup on. Make sure you're at least out of your jammies, <laughs> at least presentable. It's always better, like if you could put a box and then put your laptop up there and have your computer looking down at you rather than you looking down at it. If your camera is looking from below, it makes everything look bigger and people will see up your nose and see your chin. If you light yourself, you can light yourself from above. If you don't have good light, if you have a window, you can have the window open on your side. Don't have a window behind you because you turn into a silhouette. And just smile and feel like you just walked into a classroom with a bunch of people. It's no different. Tomorrow, Pacific Standard Time. Oh, it's daylight time. That's what you're saying. Oh my gosh, you know, I never even thought of that. Thank you, Amy. Again, thank you again. Amy is my savior. <laughs> oh, great. Tomorrow at 11 Pacific Daylight Time. Oh my gosh. I lived in California for most of my life. I did not think about that. <sighs> I feel so uneducated now. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you've yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. Thanks for watching. I'll see those of you in the school, Rally tomorrow at 11 Pacific Daylight Time. Today is April 7th of 2022. This was live. I am now bidding you adieu. Love you all. See you next time. Bye.